reconvene. Um, committee members, the CE and um, Sean Murray would like us to stay for a few minutes after the conclusion of this meeting as well um, for a message. Is that mandatory? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Deputy message, yes. Madam, I have to leave at half past four just as yep. a, 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 I mean, Madam Chair. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> Madam. Sound like a school mum. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, now Calvin has some information that we asked for. Calvin? In relation to the, we sought um, input from Wellington, Christchurch, Dunedin, Tauranga and Rotorua as to their uh, charging schedules around mobile shops. Um, Wellington, a yearly lease is required with the annual market rate set depending on the area and per square metre used. An administration fee of $410 is also charged. Ooh. So just stop there. So that, that is they charge a rent. A yearly lease is required with the annual market rate set depending on the area and the per square meter used. Fair enough, too. Plus the administration. And administ administration fee of $410 is also charged. So if, 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 a, rent, if a restaurant had, was, was paying $200 a meter, the, um, the pop-up shop would pay $200 a meter per, is that what it says? Mm, not uh, much detail. It, it says there is a market rate set, and I, I don't mm. know the detail of that. You could assume that, but, yeah. Um, in, in Christchurch, right. general permits for mobile shops, including the CBD, cost $133 to trade anywhere except within 200 metres of premises selling the same product, and an application cost of $212. Tauranga, there's a $545 permit fee, but there is no trading in the CBD. Dunedin, there's a $124 permit fee. There are specific sites in the CBD that can be leased on a long-term basis ranging from $30 per day. Uh, Rotorua, there's no mobile trading within the CBD, but they must be 150 metres from commercial businesses selling food. Uh, there are two areas outside of the CBD which mobile shop owners can lease for $1,750 a year on a first-come, first-served basis. Yeah, there's a wide variety of costs here. Very much so. I don't know if that was helpful, but good to know. <laughs> okay, so how are we going to do this is, who wish the Mayor has a motion. We're going to take the policy, a motion on the policy, then the fees, as they because they relate to the policy, and um, um, staff have said that they will uh, bring back, because this... Uh, whatever motion comes up is basically a principle on how we will arrive at um, fees and charges and that, that what that will look like exactly in dollars will come to um, the April Finance Committee, if April's okay. I suggested that to democracy because that would be the next one. Um, yes, Madam. Yeah, we would like uh, to bring back yeah. um, so we that can detail see. where we've actually worked through and looked at the range of options yes. for costs that we can include. Yeah. And then we will uh, uh, then we will put the uh, motion for the bylaw, which of course enforces the policy. So we'll do it that way. Um, oh, Chair, just a question around that. Your I have signalled an amendment yes. that is with uh, yep. Jude now, mm -hmm. and there is no point in having a discussion on fees because my amendment would not allow for fees. In yeah. the mobile trading area. Okay. So, so we'll, when your, do you need to your amendment uh, mm. relates to the policy. So we will. I will hear. Um, we'll put the motion from who worship the men now up on the board. Make sure that it's all correct. Um, and well, my motion for the policy is uh, just that the public places policy be adopted uh, with the following changes. And one is the. Um, Typos, that have been captured. because I mean I'm not going to read those all out. Um, <laughs> well, there's only a couple, but you know, I mean, we know that staff know what those are. Uh, removal of the word only in clause 4.5 Roman numeral two, because because I think it just needs to say they will be granted for a maximum period of six months. I think the only is not needed. I think it adds confusion. 
and uh, Schedule 3, Clause 3, Roman numeral 4. I think that should just be expanded to say details of public liability insurance cover to a minimum of. And then I just need to ask a question here because we've got one million and we've got two million in the policy in different places. But what's the current policy say? It is two million yeah. for existing uh, pu public places. Uh, sorry, yeah. for the uh, outdoor dining. And that's not changed. Correct. This year. So okay. So with a minimum of two million dollars cover. And clause five, Roman numeral four, on the schedule three, change the one million cover to two million. So it's the same amount everywhere. <clears throat> and that's it. Okay, so that motion um, is on the board. And, and I mean, I'm not, I was just picking up on comments, yeah. really. Mm. They're not yeah. set in stone, but I just think we, we should get some clarity. Just a very minor correction, Your Worship. I think for the, um, the one that Jude's hovering on there, I think it should be 514, not 515. It's just. Yeah. Uh, 51 oh, on Schedule oh, 3? Yes. Page 27. 514. Yeah. 514, yeah. 514. Oh. Evidence of public liability insurance yep. to a minimum of 2 million yep. cover. Mm. Yep. Thank you. So those taken into account, mm. though. Typos and yeah, errors she's and misalignments. Yeah. Yes, uh, she's put those in. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Okay, so that's been moved to her worship the mayor. Is there a seconder for that? Can I ask oh, how? I'll second. I'll, sorry, I'll second that. How do you make a decision on something like this when a fee structure, which is part of it, isn't, hasn't been locked down? Well, I, I mean, preferably we should be actually doing the policy, the bylaw and the fees all in one motion because otherwise we, the committee risks also, uh, along your point, Councillor King, of having putting up this motion, which is a policy, uh, it may go through or not. And then same with the bylaw, we may have a policy, not a bylaw, a bylaw, not a policy. Uh, which we had um, late last year and caused um, a great amount of difficulties. I would prefer it to take it all together, but that's not the indication that I had from um, from yourself and possibly some other members around the table. I'm happy to take it all together. You don't go out and agree to buy a car, sign the paperwork and then negotiate on the price afterwards. So, sorry? The price that is set for the mobile traders I, yeah. Could well influence how you vote. Well, um, so, so, Chair, if I can help. T to be frank, I, the policy provides the framework for operation. Mm. Um, and while I agree fees may impact on that, from my perspective, this is setting a policy framework. Then, uh, what we charge to enable or implement that policy is, is a separate discussion. In fact, every year, We're certainly in yeah. long term plan time, we actually review the whole fee schedule anyway, mm. separately from, from the policy. policy. So yeah. I personally don't have an issue with no. that. Um, but, I, you know, I'm totally relaxed. I, I mean, for me, the whole thing needs to be dealt with today. Mm. Um, but um, if the fee matter is not resolved yet, it will come through at some finance meeting to be set. Yeah. So, yes, that's right. You know, I don't think it's going to be a do or die. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you want, really. Well, my concern is the potato ladies paying. We're proposing quite low figures, which I know we can do anything we like. But and yet the potato ladies paying double what the the highest proposal of the three options. The potato ladies paying eight and a half grand a year to be there. So what I'm saying is this is sort of all out of kilter. So what would you, what would you what would you prefer then for us to debate to, to do I'm the fees first? I mean, either what? either way we do this creates the same risk either for the fees, either for the policy, or either for the bylaw if we're by doing it separately. No, if the fees are set, you, you know. Well, they're not yet. When you after you've set the fee, it's it's then you know what the price is, and then you know whether you're happy to let 
the mobile traders into the city on that on that um, rental or whatever it is that we're going to do. But if we haven't if we haven't set that if we haven't set that okay. amount, yep. how can we? So my question remains: Would you prefer us? I mean, oh, look, I'm easy. Would you prefer what? us to do the permit fees first? Then I mean, what? we're taking all three issues items separately. I'm happy to do the fees and charges one first. What my concern is is that the highest amount that they've proposed in option two is five thousand dollars. Yeah. But the potato ladies out there who's been there since nineteen eighties. So that's a point she's of paying debate. eight and a half grand. Yeah, that's a point of debate. What what is your preference, Councillor King? You've raised this as an issue. You don't what, buy a car until no, you set the yeah, price. Well, that's a debate point. I'm yeah, asking yeah. you a question. Would you like me? to put, ask the mover of the motion to put the um, fees for permits up first and then that can be debated. Is that what you're asking? Well, to me that makes sense. Okay, well then yes, excellent. Oh, I'm okay. fine about that. So the mover is oh, fine good. about that. So I'm we'll just happy to do what yeah. you think is easy. Really. Yeah, well that's what I'm trying for. So okay. yes and I'm still deputy. struggling in understanding if yeah. my <laughs> amendment this is, is why about I think no mobile together, traders, yeah. then it's irrelevant that you mm. And, and if yeah. that presumably is one or not, but then if, the fee debate will yeah. take into account uh, mm -hmm. no fees because there's no traders or but, the yeah. fee for the traders. But your amendment, um, Deputy Mayor, still can't raise until the, uh, until the motion for that issue, which is um, the policy, comes up. You would simply... If your intention is to not have any traders, any mobile shops in the CBD, well then obviously we're going to do the fees first, so you'd just simply vote against the fees because it's not going to apply. Okay. Um, and just so the committee can take that into account, the Deputy Mayor is proposing in his amendment to the policy that no mobile shops be located in the CBD. Except, so that may have, except by permit ex for market days, special events and the existing exemption. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, we are going to uh, do the, on page 29 there, 29 and 30, we're going to do the motion for the um, option for permit fees and are What do you want there? me to do? What do you want me to do? So do you have, put, what's your motion on that one? Do you have a motion on, on that one? On the fees. I'm on just the going to follow the recommendation by staff, which I think was option two. Have, have uh, option three, is that or option two? Which was the staff recommendation on the fee? Sorry, option three, which option allows us three. to charge the admin component, similar to what the fees are currently being charged, so this is a, yeah. and also the loss of mm. revenue opportunity. I'd just like to clarify a few. The um, current operator pays $164.30 a week. If you times that by the 26, that comes to 4,271, which is very similar to the six-month fee that we're proposing. Mm. I'll second that. For a six-month fee. Mm. OK. Option so six. option three has been moved by Her Worship yes. the Mayor and seconded by Councillor Thanks. Forsyth. Do you have an amendment? Or uh, just, just clarification, remember just, that sorry, table. Sorry, Councillor Mallet. Hang sorry, on. can I just, just check? Because um, probably the report wasn't clear about what we're doing here, as I understand it from this attachment three, we have listed the current fees. Yeah. Right? Page 20. So this isn't an intention to change those at this stage. It's no. simply to add to that fee schedule a fee for mobile shops. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. And sorry, you Worship. Also, to set a fee for other activities on footpaths. Okay, so I think it should say then. Yeah, it's not. I think we need to be clear, oh, Julie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, Julie Clausen. There is two fees in there. There is the admin fee, and you're recommending that remains at eighty-five dollars. Yes, mm. we are. Mm. And there's option three. You're recommending for the permit fee. Yes. So I think that probably needs to be. Well, I, I think it. Needs, that's what. That's what staff. I, I think B should say, and that the public places. By law, uh, permit and permit fees and charges schedule include uh, the fee as proposed for other activities on the footpath. Is that sufficient for you guys to know yes. what it is? Yes. And 
the fees as proposed for mobile shops, bracket central city, with option three. Yes. Is that, 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 that sounds good. That's what we want. Okay. So that covers two additions to the fee schedule, yes. the rest unchanged, and then subsequent to that we can. Yes. When just a question, because I, I am actually getting starting to get confused as well. When, like we've done with any uh, fees and charges, and it has in my time happened many times, that an elected, when this comes back to the April Finance Committee meeting, that pretty much if you see, I mean, I know we're going on a principle here, but if an elected member chose, looked down that column and thought, I think that that's a ridiculous price to pay or that's not enough, they can simply change that. That's correct, and that would occur at the finance meeting, yeah. and, and that's the, the... You can cherry pick for want of a better could word. Could I suggest to you that it probably um, that would be um, because it affects budget? Hmm. Mm. That would probably be better in an annual, annual plan, plan meeting. Well, that's where we'd normally I, I would normally have thought. Uh, yeah, the, um, because it might roll out for a subsequent budget. I don't know. Might, might not. Wouldn't that be was better? The, the intention is that the fees and charges this year will be done through the Finance Committee because they're consistent with the... What happens if there's a change? Uh, if it was a significant change, we'd have a budget implication. Yep. Um, the, um, so... so um, so look, I'm relaxed. I yeah, don't... I mean, I think... Whatever, yeah. But you can decide. You can decide, but I'm just writing it. OK, I'm happy with that. Is that clear for staff? Yes. That's clear. Sorry, I, I, can I say that I think that it's crazy the way we're doing this. It seems to me we need to make the policy decisions, and then if you've got a policy decision to allow, sort of along the lines of what the mayor seems to say, you've got a policy decision that allows mobile shops, yeah. then you have a fee for it, so, and, and, so can, and that yeah. gets done through the normal fee okay. setting. Councillor process. King oh, okay. didn't want it that way, oh. Councillor McPherson. Well, so. He was trying to debate one part of it, yeah. But well, he wanted us to... I'm happy with the policy, signing off the policy and doing the step by step, but I'm just following what people want. The real decision is... It's the policy. Well, the real, of course, <laughs> yes, but your colleague, Councillor, your neighbour, <laughs> Councillor King, wanted it the other way. Councillor King, are you happy for I'm us happy. to do the policy first any, now? Any way, you like. <laughs> any way I like now. OK. Um, so I'm going to go to the mover of the motion then. We so look, my preference is to deal with the policy yes. first, because mm -hmm. that is the thing that That's is right. the most yes, interesting for debate. Okay, so we're going sets the framework. Back to the policy. Mm. All right. So we've got a uh, who worship the mayor has uh, moved that. I've seconded it now. Deputy Mayor, you've waited so patiently for your amendment to have the have the light of day, and there it is. So the amendment, this is the Deputy Mayor and Councillor King's amendment. Now, um, we're going to speak on both the amendment and the policy, because the amendment's only addressing one part of that policy. So um, as the mover, Your Worship, would you like to speak first? Oh. Right. Um, I'm sorry, just to interrupt. Could I wanted right from the start to raise an issue to do with busking, not to do with mobile shops, a different one from that. So, uh, And I was going to wait mm -hmm. until this was out the road before raising that. So, a different issue. So, will that. The amendment that is of councillors. So, you're indicating a possible further amendment? Yeah, but not, okay. in but not on this. Side, okay, yeah. thanks, councillor. Sorry. Coffee. Thank you. So, um, so we deal with the amendment, then we take that amendment, would we? Or? Yeah, we'll, we'll debate on the amendment and the. Uh, actually, we'll have to debate on just the amendment then, won't we? No, we'll debate both, and if this amendment fails, then we'll go to Councillor McPherson. Yeah. Could, I, could I know what no, no. the foreshadowed is then, or, or is it going to be it's another amendment? It's not foreshadowed, it's a different no. item okay. to do with busking. Well, it'll probably be helpful oh. if we kind of knew then. But it'll well, be... well, I can tell you what it's yeah. going to be, yep. for, for no problems. It, it, what is it? Simply that we go with the original st the staff recommendation to the subcommittee of 11pm okay. closing for busking. Instead of so, Instead of if we it will have to be a foreshadow. Oh, I see what I'm saying. So maybe the mover wants to accommodate it. I'm actually it. happy to put it in here, probably. Oh, oh no, yeah. it's too complicated. I just obviously. didn't want to write, complicate this. Yeah. Show. No, no, I agree. It's getting way too complicated. Right. Okay, so we're I'm, making that change. I'm going now. No, I'm no? Just leaving okay. it as it is, and we'll see how it plays <laughs> out. All right. Right. Um, I only have a short uh, comment to make. Um, look, this has been through quite a rigorous process. 
um, that started back probably six to eight months ago, Calvin. Uh, it's, it's involved a lot of discussion with stakeholders and, uh, importantly, Calvin's people on the ground. And Calvin's team are the people that every day engage with this policy and this bylaw and understand more than anyone else how this works. Um, there are actually very few changes in the policy from what we've already got. But clearly there are a couple of issues which are, I agree, matters that people have different views on. Um, but at the end of the day, um, my position is that it would be useful to be able to have um, a, a minimum number of mobile shops operate within the central city area um, because I think it is a mechanism that adds different uniqueness and um, uh, adds to the vibrancy of the central city. One thing I would draw councillors' attention to if they are uncertain about the mobile shops is there is a minimum number. It has to go through a process to get approved. It has to demonstrate something of added value that isn't there already. And it has also the protection of 100 metres proximity away from something that would be of a similar business. So for those councillors that may be a little bit concerned about that, I think there are the mechanisms to enable you know, some protection or some mitigation of some of the concerns people raise. Um, the feedback um, through the consultation process uh, was supportive of uh, what's been ended up in the policy, but I do agree that there are certainly some submitters had some particularly strong views about particular aspects of the property but policy, but overall people um, supported the direction of travel. Um, so I, I think this is a, a matter of getting on with it and more, most importantly, making sure that Kelvin has the clarity in the policy structure to enable his people to implement it on the ground. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, further speakers? Yeah, sorry, just a point of clarification. When I raised at the start of the meeting that I felt these issues should be dealt with separately, and I, I appreciate the Mayor's just spoken overall, I felt that the issues that I've been identified by staff in here, which were the uh, mobile shops, the busking, and the width of the uh, clearway, I think it was loosely called, yep. um, were going to be dealt with separately. To put them in as a foreshadowed amendments, or and not a, they were, you know, I want to ra raise another one as well, separate from that, and I was not allowed to because it's a foreshadowed amendment. Poor uh, process because in, in, when in this sort of situation we should be able to deal with those issues that have been highlighted correctly by staff as being the contentious issue, issue by issue, and then they get encapsulated mm. in a general motion. That's how we've done this sort of thing before. To set it up as amendment and foreshadowed, that means whoever got in first can get their issue discussed and others won't even get discussed, most probably. Um, yeah, sorry, Councillor um, McPherson, I think thought when we were discussing it done in parts um, that it was about doing it the policy first, then the bylaw and then the fees. You didn't correct me or request anything further when we were discussing that and we discussed it in length. So uh, my apologies for not picking up further that you wanted to... I, I, see, I hear what you're saying. However, we do now have a motion on the table um, and an amendment which we need to deal with first. Well, OK, then I, I did not move the foreshadowed amendment. No, no, I know you didn't. It's listed up there as one. So oh, OK, not... so we'll, we'll, um, democracy can remove that. Oh, remove the whole foreshadowed? Yes. No, no, because oh. I've identified an item that I'm going to raise. If I haven't called it a foreshadowed amendment. You may have chosen to, but I haven't. OK, so we'll remove that for No, you. I didn't. Uh, the, it's, well, I'm trying, oh, Councillor McPherson, I'm really trying to be helpful, but I'm not, so it's not... Well, I think it'd be most helpful, Madam Chair, would it? if you allowed the issues well, like, that were raised by staff to be debated. Well, like I said just a few minutes ago, I... As I asked we you was, that at the start. Yep, yeah, and when I said to you, also, we'll do it, I said it quite a few times, we'll do it separately, is everybody happy with that? You didn't say anything further, so I assumed... Mm, because that, I assumed you'd agreed with doing the issues well, raised thought, by staff separately. I, well, then I apologise, but I thought I was pretty I mean, clear on how state, we're we've doing had it. We've had discussions, questions around the table about each of those three issues. 
Um, that's clearly what people want. Yeah, but we did it in the bracket of the policy, the bylaw, and then the fees. So I didn't realise we had to break it down As even chair, further. I would have thought that the chair well, you, realised that those were the three issues. No, I can't read system. your mind. So no, but, but perhaps listening to the words would help. Well, I. I, <laughs> I we move on. You, I, you weren't clear. So yes, we do need to move on. So we've got a, a motion. I'm sorry. I'm well, sorry. I'm sorry, but we. No. Stand I, I asked for the word foreshadowed motion to be removed. The the well, democracy people. No, they've removed the whole thing. <sighs> And that's not what I asked. Okay, so I don't said, remove I, the whole I said I would thing. Identify okay, so the don't issue. raise your voice. I'm trying really hard to be helpful to I you, said I, would, I said yeah. that I would be happy to raise now because the mayor queried yes. that what the issue was that I wanted to raise after this one was dealt with. That's what I yes. said. That's all I said. Okay, so w what do you want democracy to do? Exact words they had up there without their foreshadowed motion heading. Okay, so democracy, could you please do that? I'm not clarify what status that well, is, Madam Chair. Councillor McPherson? <laughs> I tried to, but you dis you overruled me. So uh, I want us to be able to debate and decide on each of the three issues that have been raised around this table, the same issues that the staff have identified. So we how you do it as chair, you between you and democracy, really. Well, actually, it's for the committee to decide because we've got a motion on the table that has been moved and seconded and an amendment. Democracy, to do what Councillor uh, McPherson is requesting, what would we, we what would we need to do? What would the process be? Since I'm not clear on the status of the last sentence, Madam Chair, but I've put it up there. I on think, the board for display. I think display. what Councillor McPherson is, is asking is that he would prefer that we take some of the issues in the policy separately. So to do that, we would need to uh, get rid of this motion. So what's the process? Is that the committee, 75% of the committee has to, dis is that a procedural motion that he's asking look, for? Look, in several, oh, in se in several hearings, asking. Madam Chair, run yep. by you yourself, you've split off the issues, then you've had an encapsulated and motion all... to cover them all. Why, why are you following a different process now? I have no idea. Well, you're being very confusing because you're asking to split something up and now, and you just said with that comment, we should be encapsulating it. So I'm at trying to accommodate... It. At the end of it, you have an encapsulating motion. That's what we did with the liquor bylaws. So we... we, we <laughs> do you? Exactly what we did with liquor. So we still have... I, I still need some advice from democracy on, because we have this on the table, what do what we I, do about What I that? think I'm hearing Councillor McPherson say, Madam Chair, is he would like the opportunity yeah. to debate some elements contained within the policy prior to the policy being put to the meeting, so prior to the motion and the amendment being put to the meeting, the elements contained within the policy. So how do we debate without a motion? Why can't that be debated in the, the bylaw that you chaired? <laughs> but we did, we did actually debate and vote on those individual Each items. Correct. Yeah. So we still need motions for the individual items. Yep. And that's yep. what I suggested at the start. We'll do the top one first. Okay. Look, we're just going to take a couple of minutes break so we can sort this out. Um, quarter past four. <laughs> uh, Democracy is going to explain. Thank you, Madam Chair. I suggest that the meeting to allow Councillor McPherson to move two amendments to get them on the table to be considered formally by the committee, that, that, that the committee suspends that element of standing orders that prohibits a member from moving two amendments, and that way the meeting can consider one, consider the next one, and then consider the third one that's already on the table. And, okay, so... Can you explain why? Why, do, why are we my, considering suspending standing orders well, so that my, an elected member can get two amendments on the table? Yeah. I mean, 
We've always had to choose one. Uh, yes, many Councillor, times, I think, I'm sure I many think of us would I'm, want to have put two, even more. What I think what I'm hearing is this this process is, is it, previously processes have been dealt with by the committee or by council in different ways. And, and my view is that standing orders are an enabling policy and not a blocking policy. Yeah. And, and I think if there are issues that the committee actually want to discuss, it's, it's often useful not to suspend standing orders. I, I wouldn't normally recommend that, but to enable a, an open discussion, I think, and it sometimes is, is useful for the committee to think that, to but, move in that but direction. But you're advising us to just, um, not just that the one element, orders, just yeah, that. It's just that one element, and mm. Brendan will have the reference. That will allow two amendments yeah. by a member just on this. But it's up to the committee. And is that that's a procedural motion? Yes. And who would move that procedural motion? Would that be Councillor McPherson or someone else? Um, well, it can be any member. It wouldn't. It, if no. Councillor McPherson it moved it, it doesn't yeah. preclude him from. No, proceed. Because it's a separate does. motion altogether. Yeah. But that's the way that you can just move on. Okay. And pass. So that's the advice. As chair, would you like to move? No. Why should I? It's not In that case, I think. A, it's not. I, my, I, I think we don't know how I'm going to vote. But why meeting? should it, it's not my. That's a procedural motion. Well, We've can, just heard from democracy. Uh, it's no point. No, no, it's a complete I? waste of time. Why is uh, it? Poorly chaired meeting, um, and we, we we should have enabled each of the items. The chair knows the items that are due to come up uh, if people get a chance. And the third one that's not no, even no, listed up there is to do with the, as the staff have said, to do with the width of carriageway on the footpath of Victoria Street. Those are the three issues that have been identified. They are the three primary issues councillors so are wanting. So we've got a way I'm, I'm not going to move. If the chair's not prepared to support a well, suspension of standing know. orders to allow No, that I didn't say, actually, Councillor McPherson, I didn't say that. I didn't say I wasn't going to support it. I didn't Why don't you that. move it to an... Why uh, should I move a motion that's not my motion? This is... This is a request that you've made, Councillor, so why don't no, you... No, my request is that the whole... You motion. don't even know which way I want to go on those what issues. Well, no, I don't. OK, so the point is to... I'm trying to enable the debate on those three. And, you're you're and trying to... found a way forward to do that. Bullying me into moving a motion that's not my motion it is, it's really unacceptable. Don't, uh, hang on a second. I didn't raise that you should move it. Another you, councillor you, did. I did not. You, but you questioned me just a second ago yeah. about why wouldn't I? I said it's not my motion, so let's move on. I've Do we have seen that such procedural a poorly motion? Chaired meeting. Do we have that procedural motion from the advice from democracy? Oh, it's just best that do, people do, vote do the whole have, thing down. Do we start have again. that? But gosh, there's a way forward, and it's not no. been taken. No. Do we have that procedural motion? I'm not going to ask again. <clears throat> We, we don't have that procedural motion could, to move uh, Could forward. democracy put the wording on the board, please? Sure. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, I'll move that. So that's been moved by Councillor King as a procedural motion. Is, is there a seconder for that procedural motion? Councillor Gallagher? Right, debate. Counts, is there, oh, there's no debate on procedural motions, is there? Okay, so we're going to put that. Hang on. So we're going to put that to the vote. All those in favour? Um, oh, just please raise your hands. Councillors Tooman, Mallet, McPherson, King, Your Worship the Mayor, Gallagher, Yule, Councillor Chesterman, and Madam Chair, it's carried. Oh, and, and, one and against. against. Great. Okay. So I'm going to abstain. Don't. No, you can't abstain. Well, you could uh, delete that standing order too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to well, you could. Delete that standing yeah. order as well, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That, that it's changed. Okay, so what? So what was the vote? Now, so the vote. Ten votes were in favour of suspending that standing order temporarily. Am I allowed so to speak to that? And one okay. against? No, there's no speaking on a procedural motion. Because that's a standing order. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, we're not in standing, standing, order. We're not in standing order, so standing orders have been revoked. No, only that section of the standing orders that says a, an elected member can only. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so now. So can I just clarify what the vote was? Well, how many times do you need to temporarily suspending standing orders and Councillor Forsyth? I've got abstained. I've abstained. There's no such vote. Is there an abstention in the standing orders? I'd like a minute note that I've abstained. Is there, this is, is there is an abstention allowed under standing orders? Just, uh, we have no standing orders that have been revoked. No, um, Councillor Forsyth, just that clause in the standing orders, only that clause that relates to a, an elected member only being able to move one amendment. All the other standing orders stay. Unless there's another so procedural motion. So if I want to abstain, then I would have to move a procedural motion. Yes, you would. To then remove permit somebody to remove that clause or, that relates to. Or leave to, the room. Am I allowed to leave speak? The room. Leave the room. To the reason why I'm abstaining? No, no. Well, no, you can't speak to a procedural motion. No one can speak to a procedural motion. It's just simply voted on, put and voted on. In that case, I won't abstain. I'll vote for it. Okay. So it's a misunderstanding. I don't think democracy. democracy manager, um, Councillor Forsyth, is voting for the procedural motion. Is that eight? But now standing orders don't apply. No, just that section. So it means that any elected member can move more than one amendment. Because normally just you can only... Meet, just for this issue? Yes. Just for this one well, item? Yes. During, well, actually during this meeting, the remainder of the meeting. For the meeting? Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so because this is new, uh, Democracy Manager, do, do I just call for a, a number of amendments? Do we go... I'll come to you, Councillor McPherson, because you'll be first I think up. what the meeting's got on the table is a motion and an amendment moved by Councillor Chesterman, seconded by Councillor King. Yeah. And then we do have um, foreshadowed amendments, oh. which, which will be um, taken following the consideration of the first amendment. Uh, I believe a foreshadowed mean, measure, amendment under the standing orders only happens if an amendment is lost, is only allowed. What, what the suspension of standing orders I understood allowed was further amendments, mm -hmm. not foreshadowed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I w if that's the case, I'm prepared to make that a further amendment and also list the other one. I don't even, I, the the worry. standing orders allow for additional amendments following the consideration of the amendment on the table. So once this amendment is dealt with, the meeting can move further amendments. Yeah. And then the next one is dealt with, and it's like a, but a the change, process. The change was 
the, 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 the change the was that an elected member could move. Yes, could, multiple could put multiple For example, amendments. Councillor Chesterman has moved an amendment, yes. and by suspending Not just that one element of standing orders, Councillor Chesterman Not. could move a further amendment, yep. which is not normal practice. Okay. I'd like to signal that I'd like to at least uh, move at least one amendment as well. Please. Yes. Okay. All right. So we need to deal with uh, this amendment first. Now, who wish that the mayor has spoken? Um, Deputy Mayor, would you yes. like to yes, your I amendment? Yes, I would. Like you can go next. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. I circulated to councillors a fairly self-explanatory picture. This was taken at the last long weekend. It shows a coffee cart that normally is placed down near Councillor Mallet's house. In the middle of don't the bring CBD. Me into this. <laughs> in the middle of the C B D. You don't live in the museum. Right opposite Memento. Now I talked to the owner of Memento, who, who took this photograph, and she said to me that this has impacted her business. So think about this. If we allow mobile traders in the CBD, that space right opposite Memento, potentially, unless you applied the 100 metres or the 150 metres, could operate from there. And I think that would be hugely damaging to one cafe, if not others in the area. And this comes at a time when we are trying to support business in the CBD to make them more sustainable and viable. And there are, of course, a number of cafes operating successfully in the southern end of Victoria Street. I think to allow a caravan like that to choose to operate from 6 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night is designed to kill business we have in the CBD. It has the potential to wreck CBT businesses, particularly cafes. And if you listen to the owner of Memento, so what does she do? She signs a legal document called a lease, and it's for a period of time with rights of renewal. She can't just walk out of a business because you can chase that person down for payment of the lease anywhere, anytime. She pays the rates and the insurance. She provides disability toilets because she also sells uh, alcohol. She pays rental for the seats and the tables. And the public can often just wander in there and ask to use the toilets. The legal commitment to the lease uh, that I have mentioned. I think when I move to page 30 and look at the fees, I accept that what you say is correct. We must look at the costs to council. But this is more of local government gobbledygook where there's no consideration taken of the business that chooses to set up in a proper way, a sustainable business that will be there this next long weekend, all the weeks in between and the days in between, and the following period, where mobile traders can come in, cherry pick <coughs> the hours, and disappear. And also, that particular trader has the car parked up on the grass as well. So I'm very suspicious of where these mobile traders will operate, and where will they operate from, because they have the potential to destroy business. And I think it's sad that we cannot think about protecting those sustainable businesses for <coughs> all the other costs that they wear. The rental for the tables, the disabled toilets, uh, seats, security, staff training, and so the list goes on. I have another example of a, of a small cafe at the other end of town paying you know, probably around $20,000 in rent, $4,000 in rates, and twelve or $1,500 in insurance. And it could well be that you put one of these traders right outside that business and you would kill them. 
So I think that we need to move forward, and I'm asking councillors to support the amendment from uh, myself and Councillor King. I did attend the committee meeting, and I heard the submitters uh, talk about these things. And it wasn't, in my view, the surveys of whether people in the CBD wanted this. It was a split situation. And I think that if you had asked them specifically about the time these people could trade, you might have had a different outcome. Now, the funny thing is that I might support mobile traders if they had the hours from 6 o'clock at night to 2 o'clock in the morning. And then it wouldn't impact on some of these businesses that are trading in the city. But that's not on the table. I think the smartest thing to do at this point is to uh, agree that no mobile trader is permitted in the defined CBD area except by permit for market days, special events, and the existing potato exemption. So I'm asking you to support that, councillors. Thank you. Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, thank you. And I apologise, I believe it's about 22, quarter two. Mm -hmm. But it goes to full council. I, uh, much reflection, I did attend part of the BNI meeting. Uh, I'll be supporting the Deputy Mayor um, at this time, and I've certainly been in overseas cities. Germany is a good example. We have very vibrant central city areas, markets, mobile shops. That is not the situation here at the moment. And in terms of fairness, we, and I also want to acknowledge uh, Sandy Turner from the Hamilton Central Business Association, uh, where she acknowledged and reinforced uh, what Councillor Chesterman said in terms of that the business community is relatively divided uh, on this issue. Simple reason is um, if you have a business that commits to a shop, pays rental, pays rates, uh, also you have the property owner who is committed to investing his or her um, or their company money to purchase a property, develop a property and then gets rent uh, in return but also has overheads and as long as the, the property is, remains empty, which is, of course, the situation we observe, then, of course, that is a cost to those property owners versus what we're actually asking or would be asking, in essence, for a mobile trader uh, to pay. I think the CBD, my observation is that it's at a very delicate stage. I think there are some really areas of high success. One of the high success areas actually is the hospitality in all its forms. That is a tick the box. There's some other areas of success, absolutely. So I think we should be incredibly cautious at this point, uh, at this point, uh, in allowing uh, mobile traders. And I know in Christchurch, and other ex examples of the pop-up shops, mobile traders are working well. So I don't say this is fixed forever, but I think in terms of the current state of our CBD, I'll be supporting the amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Any further speakers? Councillor King. The stakeholders who I'm supporting the amendment, the stakeholders who submitted on the mobile shop matter were divided on this. It wasn't a clear cut um, decision at, at all. There, there, there was arguments either way, and it certainly wasn't as has been suggested, um, that there wasn't any, there was definitely um, opposition to them being in the city centre. According to one of the submitters who walked around this city block here, um, down Alexander Street and back down Victoria Street, he said he counted 27 empty shops in that city block um, before he came in to submit. That's frightening. It's um, a lot of shops. Um, he may have been counting on both sides of the road, I'm not sure, but it's a lot of shops. And what I've heard while we've been the discussions that have come up from elected members on this mobile shop issue is that it will re it'll go towards revitalising the city centre. I just don't see how that works. You've got someone who sells coffee and you've got a coffee cart 100 metres down the road who are paying no rates, no insurance, 
very little rental. We haven't decided on that yet, but it'll be very little. Um, that I don't see that shop could be there for less than thirty thousand dollars in overheads a year, and somebody can tow a caravan in here and go into competitions with them, go into competition with them on some fluffy idea that elected members around this table think that's going to revitalise the city centre. From what I've seen, the decisions that have been made out of this chamber over the years about the city centre and about revitalising the city centre have actually had a reverse effect, ripping up footpaths, putting in cobblestones, spending ratpayers' money, sending shops broke while it happens because it takes six months to do it instead of the scheduled six weeks, taking car parks away, making it hard for people to park, parking issues which we're supposedly sorting out, but I don't believe that we've done the right thing there either. Sometimes you've got to let the market decide where, where things are going to go. Um, they'll come in, they'll cherry pick the prime hours, they'll tow their caravans away when they're not, um, they won't employ staff, their litter will be put into the council's rubbish tins, they won't provide their own rubbish tins, they don't provide their own toilets, so that means they're going to use the city's toilets or go into other shops who are paying rent and rates and insurance and use their toilets. They've still, people still have to go to the toilet when they eat and drink. And, Oh, hang on, I'm not done. No. Um, I think that if we were serious in this chamber about revitalising the city centre, we, we would look at the rates. There's a, a rates differential in place where for every $1 paid in rates under capital value for residential properties, shop owners in the CBD are paying $1.70. Now, that figure at the moment is actually $2.24, I think it is, and it's coming down over the next 10 years with the changes to two seventy. But if we were, if we really were serious about kick-starting the city, why don't we look at the rates differential? Our members around this table won't do that because they know it's not a rates winner and there's an election coming up. We shouldn't be looking at fairer lights. We shouldn't be looking at fixing clocks that belong to private <coughs> building owners at a cost of $24,000 of ratepayers' money. The crazy ideas we've got, and this is another one, towing caravans in here to sell coffee and, and pies. So the longer we fiddle with what's happening in, this, in Central City here, the worse it's going to get. I believe that if we let this happen, happen, we're opening a can of worms. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mallett. Um, I'll support the, the amendment. Um, I'm a bit torn on this one because I am very supportive of people trying other ways of prov uh, providing services and products to uh, consumers. The thing that swung it for me is I cannot see how uh, we can provide a level playing field uh, the, the fees we are charging, the mobile shops, just to me don't, and I know they don't get anything like the services in terms of toilets and, and um, par, et cetera that the existing shops have, but um, the fees just don't to me seem to reflect the, uh, the usage that the mobile shops have on the city infrastructure. Uh, and therefore I think the, uh, they are getting an unfair advantage over the built existing um, uh, providers of services and products in the CBD. Um, failing that, I would be very welcome, uh, welcoming of the, the pop-up stores or mobile stores, but I, I'm concerned that th it is not a level playing field as the, as the way the free, stru free structure is currently pr uh, proposed. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor McPherson. Yes, I, um, on balance, support the amendment. I think one of the things that the uh, Deputy Mayor covered tipped the balance <coughs> for me and talked about, uh, basically, it's all very well to charge fees to recoup some of the costs, but what about the costs to the competing businesses nearby that are working in the same field? And I happen to know that within a, literally a stone's throw here, uh, ha have known the owners of two coffee shops that have had to close down in the last few months. 
um, just around this area around here. And I, it is clearly already hard enough for them to do business at this point in the CBD without adding to uh, the uh, lack of level playing field, as Councillor Mallet put it. Um, I think, in principle, mobile shops do add vitality to an area that they go into, in principle, generally speaking. But then you have to look at the particular circumstances at the time, and Councillor Gallagher talked about this as well. The particular circumstances at this time in the CBD mean that if we enabled um, those carts to go in, they would be in direct competition with a, with a market that's got a fairly limited size of clientele, and we would be cutting, we would be saying yes on the one hand to a good idea without actually taking account of the very likely, very real implications of letting that good idea loose in the city. So I don't think it's the time to do that. Uh, I think the coffee, by not allowing coffee carts into the CBD, we're not restricting their ability to go elsewhere in the city where there are events and people. And uh, for instance, we could say, go to the base. Uh, we'll help, we'll give you a recommendation. There's a lot of foot traffic there. I don't think they'd be allowed in by Tainui, of course, but um, that's, you know, it's far more viable to the culture of the city that they go to a place like that at the moment than the CBD. So on balance, I'm supporting the amendment. Right, are there any further speakers? Councillor Forsyth? Yeah, and look, thank you, uh, Councillor Gallagher, for reminding me that we do have another bite at this uh, when it goes to the full council. It's only a recommendation on where we have some uh, councillors away, absent. Um, look, I'm against the amendment, and I'm pro-mobile traders, and I think people need to have a wider view, open their eyes a little further, that mobile traders is not just about coffee carts. Um, I think adding more coffee carts to an already overloaded coffee CBD is probably not the kind of business you want to attract. I think uh, mobile shops encourage entrepreneurship. I think Hamilton, as a young population, a young demographic, could be in a position where council is actually inspiring, enabling, encouraging young entrepreneurs, young businessmen and women to get out and give business a go without being shackled by the rates and the bricks and mortar type of uh, uh, hindrances that many businesses eventually, and some uh, in not such a successful way, have had to face. So pop-ups, mobiles are good, a good start. When you think about a young startup businessman or woman that wants to test the market, that wants to test a product, that wants to test a brand, get grow some business and customer loyalty, this is a perfect way to do it without having to go through that huge startup expense. And the good thing is, if this successful business, and it's not coffee carts, we're talking about different types of businesses. Uh, so that we can offer a choice and add some diversity to the vibrancy of the city. If they are successful, you know what? They might even come back and inhabit and, and take up rent in one of those 27 vacant uh, spaces in the city. So this is an enabling mechanism. And really, I don't think up to three mobile shops is going to shut down every other business in the city. It gives ordinary folks a chance to share their business, a chance to share a new product with the, with the ordinary people. I mean, think about startups like Duck Island Ice Cream. Now, I don't know the origins of how that business started, but that's new, it's inventive, it sells ice cream, but it's a different kind of ice cream, and that's the kind of difference, that's the kind of vibrancy, that's the kind of opportunity that we want to be encouraging in this city. As I said, uh, mobile traders offer a diversity of, of product, and you're focused, you're narrow visioned on a coffee cart. Well, there's more to business diversity, business startups, and coffee. Bee products, honey products, different flavour uh, foods, different ethnic foods. I mean, crikey. 
we're going to just scratch the surface of the different types of ethnic food choices that are available to, this, to, to all of us. I mean, the northern end of town has more of an ethnic diversity. It's not just about French fries, hot dogs, meat pies, Coke and, and coffee. It's about something different, something exciting, something that'll get people to want to come back into the city and see what the point of difference is. It makes gourmet food, if we're talking about food carts, it makes gourmet food available and affordable for everyone. So I'm sure, you know, I think mobile trucks enable but budding businessmen and women. It allows businesses to grow, to diversify, and it provides even more of a reason for people to want to come into the city and see what's new, see what's novel and see what else is out there, rather than the normal ordinary offering that the city has, has got at the moment. Thanks. Are there any further speakers? Before I go to the uh, mover for her right of reply. So, Your Worship. Oh, no, no, I've got no. nothing further to say. Right, so um, we're going to put the uh, Chesterman King Amendment. Everyone's clear on that. So all those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hands. Oh. Councillors Mallet, McPherson, mm -hmm. King, okay. Gallagher, Chesterman. And those against the amendment? Tooman, Worship the Mayor, Councillors Forsyth, Yong and... Madam Chair, that's five votes each, equality votes, <laughs> Madam Chair, so you've got the right to exercise your casting And vote. I'm not going to exercise my casting vote. So what position are we in? I think the General Manager needs to consider what the status quo might be. Perhaps as a standing order we could just... <laughs> just another one? We could give you the casting vote. <laughs> well, I... I think cost. At this Point stage, cost. <laughs> Point cost. Point cost. at this stage, we're obviously we're debating the entire policy. But my my take on the status quo is that uh, at the moment, the, the policy as proposed by staff includes mobile shops, and that remains the. Hang on a second. The, uh, the point of order there, very much so. The status quo is the legal status quo. That's what it talks about in the Act. Um, the legal status quo is what the policy is in place right now, whatever that is. I don't even yeah. know exactly what not, it is. Yeah. That's, it's, correct, not what, it's not what's in the a staff proposal, it's what's there on the ground outside. That's yeah. the status quo. That's the status quo, although that policy and bylaw um, is up for consideration as part of this meeting. Right now, my advice is that because that amendment hasn't passed, hasn't failed, the the proposition in front of you is as per the staff report, which is mobile traders be included as part of the draft policy. You haven't yet voted on the policy, but the proposition to remove that from the draft policy hasn't been successful. So that my advice is that at the moment the draft policy continues to include that clause that mobile traders are in the draft policy. Because is it because the amendment is the amendment doesn't capture the motion as well. The no. amendment is just on removing mobile that, traders. Just removing the mobile trailers from the draft right. policy. We haven't yet voted on the overall draft policy, yeah. okay. but at this stage the draft policy yet to be considered includes the clause around mobile traders. So a question on that then, if I may. Mm. If, that, if the final resolution also, the same point, would, would it then depend on what the, was in place out in the public, what our current operative policy is? So I don't quite understand your question. The final capture all motion yeah. today was also had the same result. I'm just uh, trying to... it, it, the final policy today um, didn't go through. Yeah. Then, then the um, the bylaw actually uh, ceases. It re gets revoked on the twenty fifth of this month, and there would be no policy, and there would be no bylaw. Well, well no, I, pilot, there'd be no bylaw. No, um, I, I just need to ask a question about that. In isolation of this policy, we could pass the bylaw because there is an existing policy. We've chosen to go through a review process with the policy. So we could pass 
but we can still pass the bylaw, which then actions the existing policy until such time as we replace it with this one. If that was the nature of the resolution, yes, you could. Because the bylaw is, as you know, silent on the detail because it doesn't need to have the detail. It is the instrument by which you can exercise authority with whatever given policy is at any given time. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think that that... They, don't, they go hand in hand, of course they do, but they, the bylaw could be passed without finalising the detail. This would just mean we've got the existing policy until we sort all this out. That, that's how I read it. So what's... Does anyone else yeah, have a no, view on I, that? I concur. Concur? Right, yeah. here we go. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, but because we do need to have a uh, bylaw in place, and I think it would be remiss of councillors, whatever your views are on the policy, and I understand we've all got different views, it, it's you know okay, but it would be quite wrong in my view if we didn't have a bylaw in place, and I think everyone would recognise that because these guys have got to have some authority, and that can be based on the existing policy. Yeah, okay. I mean that would be yeah. wrong for us not to. All right, so now we're going to um, we're going to get rid of that off the board, and we're going to continue with asking the floor for for I mean, amendments. Way around this. Yeah. So, Councillor McPherson. Yeah. I want to move an amendment to test yep. the waters mm -hmm. on the second issue raised by staff, and that is the staff recommendation to the uh, business and what you call it committee. Um, permitting busking until 11pm be included in the draft file, or is that... I don't know, what, what's the PPP? Public places oh. policy. In the policy. Oh, okay, so that's whatever the right... Changing the time. Alphabet supers, yep. So that's an amendment by Councillor McPherson. Is there a seconder for that amendment? There's no seconder for that amendment. All right. Fair enough. Okay, so that amendment fails. Councillor Gallagher, are you ready to go? No, are you ready to go? No, I'm trying you... to make arrangements. I don't know how long it's going. I'm just okay, all right. So you want to get this through to full council. Okay. I, I will have to go. Thank, that thank you, Councillor. I do need to signal to you as well that um, I am supposed to be somewhere thank at 5 o'clock and I could possibly yep. leave at quarter past. Okay, but I, thank I you. But I will have to be there by 5.30. Yep. All right. Um, so, Councillor McPherson? Yeah, the other yeah. one that I wish to move, again, to test the waters on an item that staff have raised, that the... I, I don't know the correct terminology, staff can work on that, but that the uh, width available for the general public to traverse yeah. on Victoria Street remain at the current 1.7 metres. And I think to get the import, even if the technical wording mightn't be exactly... So this would be on page 16, 1.4.1, 1. 1. 1. 1. where it says there must be a continuous... 1.7. 1. 1. No, it's the clause she's referring yeah, to. Oh, sorry, no, clause 1.4.1 on page 16. So um, it would be referring to that. One point, clause 1.4.1 1. 1 in the policy, <coughs> that the continuous clear way be... It amended to 1.7. No, is that not no. Right I word? think it's oh. got to say there must be a continuous two metre oh, wide clear way maintained on all footpaths at all times, with the exception of Victoria, Victoria Street. Mm. And, and what, I are think the, what are the bookends? Which shall be 1.7. Yes. What, what, what's the what's the bookends on Victoria Street? And that From would what be, to what? That would be Victoria, uh, bounded by Ross Trevor. Okay. And so is it the Knox? Mm. It's it, the it map. matches the inner okay. city map. Yes. Okay. Um, which which will be 1.7 metres. Um, in the area defined by the map and schedule, whatever. Is it just Victoria Street mm. you yes, want? Yes, that's the don't exception want that's no, currently in place. OK. Yep. So that's the only change, Victoria Street? Both it's not, sides? It's, that's, to, in other words, to uphold the existing policy. Yeah. In Victoria Street? Yes. Yes, because there is... A, yep. So Hood Street's already two metres. Hood Street's already two metres. Mm -hmm. Outlying areas in the rest of the city is 1.5 currently. Yep. Okay. Okay, so that's been moved by Councillor McPherson. Is there a seconder for that? I, I, I personally think it should. Well, is that clear to you? I mean, I think it should be using the clause. Yeah. Clause. 
So that's... Ouch. OK. Well, I... Um, There's the clauses in there. That a change be made to clause 1.4.1. And that it read, there must be a continuous two metre wide clearway maintained on all footpaths at all times, with the exception of Victoria Street. Between Ross Street Road and Knox. Mm. In the area contained in the map in Schedule X, whatever it is, four. Schedule 4, which will be 1.7 metres. Yeah, I'll second that. <coughs> I, think, I think you really, you should say, with the except Victoria Street, uh, within the map, within the area contained in the map in Schedule 4, because I, I think you need to just keep referencing back to the map. Because when we've got a bylaw that combines with this, it's quite important about the words. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. Which will be, yeah. In that's good. the area. Yeah. Yep. I'll take the bounded by Knox and Ross Trevor out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councillor McPherson, you happy with the wording? Oh, um, the import's well known, I don't mind the wording. <laughs> and that's democracy, that's seconded by Councillor King. <coughs> Let him go. But then we've got the bylaw and the fees to go, unless you. Yeah, these are the contentious. Unless that's going to be quick. <laughs> so is that we're all done, Jude? That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll go to. Uh, we'll debate this amendment, Councillor McPherson. Uh, yes, thanks. Look, all I want to do with this was to ensure that uh, con this contentious issue had the opportunity for a debate and a recommendation to council. I think the, uh, I, on balance, it's not a strong issue, but I do think that the current policy works reasonably well. Where it doesn't work well, uh, where people do get blocked, is not because <coughs> the uh, hospitality service providers in Victoria Street put their chairs all over the footpath willy-nilly, It's sim they do keep, if you look at the staff of the each day, they do keep the chairs and tables at least 1.7 metres away in almost all cases and quickly get reminded by our staff if they're not doing that. But the punters, uh, the customers that use the area do tend to encroach from time to time and need to be perhaps more vigorously reminded by the shop owners, but I think that's a minor operational issue that can be easily handled without using a sledgehammer to crack a walnut and force them further apart than they, than they already are. I think that the, it works reasonably well. Everyone gets a, a fair crack at using Victoria Street uh, when they need to. It doesn't need to be changed to change the way the city operates. So I say leave it how it is and just ask, uh, have our staff request of the um, people who have the licence to occupy the footpath that they do self-policing a little more rigorously to help us all get through a situation where there's competing requirements for use of the footpath. Councillor Mallet, thank you. Uh, I, I agree with Dave um, and just reiterate that this is a matter of uh, policing or enforcement rather than whatever is in the law because um, no matter where the restaurant or cafe owners put the chairs and tables on the footpath, the minute a big group come to get come and they all move their tables together as everyone does, 
um, no bylaws going to uh, control that. It's going to be up to the uh, cafe owner to try and police it to the to the best he or she can. I don't think uh, much we say in the bylaw uh, will have much impact uh, unless it is policed uh, firstly and foremost by the cafe owner. Okay. I think to be efficient, I'm wondering if there's anyone speaking against the amendment that we yep. could hear from. Oh, Councillor. Yeah, I just want to speak uh, briefly against the amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate making exemptions for everybody. Um, it makes it confusing for the operator of the business and it also makes it very infuse, uh, confusing for the enforcement. One of the issues I think is that let's primarily look at what is a footpath all about. And a footpath is really so that people can move along, go about their business, not to have people actually taking up the footpath but having coffees and lunches and all that sort of stuff. Um, the city safe manager said before, it's only a matter of moving one chair off the end of the table to actually give you two metres, so I would be voting against it. Okay. Right, so um, we, are there any further speakers, Your Worship? I was going to speak against this amendment. What we're talking about, councillors, is 15 centimetres each side because it's the difference is 30 centimetres. And now I appreciate that in the scheme of things that might be a lot for some of the hospitality providers down there, but one of the things that was quite clear in um, some of the, spe the speakers, but also in the written submissions, was the manoeuvrability of people through Victoria Street. And I'm sure councillors go down there frequently and, and it is quite difficult now, um, I took the opportunity to do a little bit of reconnaissance myself as to what 15 metres might, 15, not metres, 15 centimetres might look like. And while I accept it's anecdotal and it's just me sitting around in a chair in a few cafes, I actually think this is quite easily accommodated within everything that's down there already. It's simply about managing the way people place their tables and their chairs and how far out they sit. Most or many of the cafes through there don't actually have chairs backing out onto the footpath anyway, because of course they know that that is the carriageway you know, for the people. Um, but what appears to have happened, this is just my observations and anecdotally, is that further and more and more chairs of tables are trying to be squashed in, which is creating the problem. Um, I, I think it is sensible. One thing we do know is that down Hood Street seems to work with no problem whatsoever two metres, and that is probably the area that mostly has most people on the footpaths in certain parts. Maybe not on Sundays when brunch is high, but so so for me it was just about listening to what some of the people from the disability community had to say, and listening about the importance of consistency and actually doing my own sort of reconnaissance, if you like. And so I came to the conclusion that it was actually quite sensible to have a, a uniform approach. The footpaths on Hood Street are about six metres wide. Of course it works in Hood Street. For seven years at least we've established the gap's been 1.7 metres. It's about getting people into the city centre. It's about making it work. It's about making the place, bringing people and having people gathered. And if you've got a move a bit during rush hour to get through the gap. That's how it is. But seven years it's worked, and here we are now changing, looking at changing it. I, I just think stay with what we've got. I think it works. I think it's clearly defined. It's Victoria Street's 1.7. Everywhere else is two metres. So I'm voting for the amendment. Thank you. Right. Um, no further speakers. For the amendment, I'll put the amendment to the vote. Um, that's the McPherson King amendment. All those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hands. Councillor McPherson, King, Gallagher, Yong, Chesterman and Madam Chair. That's six votes for the amendment. And those against the amendment? Two against. It's carried. Thank you. Right, um, Councillor McPherson... That was all I had. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any further amendments from the committee? Councillor um, Forsyth was talked about one. Yes, yeah, she's left. Uh, yeah. that at least be alerted to us before I, the council meeting. Uh, I don't know I, what I know. it was, but I'll have a chat to... I think a couple so, of us have 
I the chair, I was going to. Yeah. I was hoping to find a way through here. Yes. Um, so can you give uh, take a break for five minutes because I'm hoping sure. that we can get away through this. Yeah. Is that I, right? Yes. I know we've got to pass the bylaw, but it would make we sense. We do. So I guess if we can send them all through, otherwise. Okay. Uh, we do to discuss this Thursday, with the council, okay. and that on backs Thursday. on to the finance committee. Well, hang on, meeting. some of us have to go, and it means I there won't to... be a quorum here anyway. Well, well that was my There's point. Not I've be got, a got to go anyway. too. What I was trying to do, in the spirit of, of um, you know, let's try and find a way through here, can we do that now? But if you've got to go, I'm very happy to go as well. What Look, happened? if we fail a quorum, we fail a quorum. People have other engagements. It's Why aren't we just taking a vote? We can't do anything about that. Um, so look, let's break for for five minutes. Well, sorry, what is it? I mean, what, so what are we breaking? Well, there's the tight so vote on the first one. So you have yeah, to so we're trying to find a common so, so so obviously won't just get passed. So you and I, I are the only people that see this. Clearly, at goodness' yeah. sake, status quo. It's time critical sure. because this has got to go okay. to council no, no, meeting. But look, if you have to go, then you have to go. If we wait five, give us an idea. But hey, if you don't want it, okay, we're breaking. It's breaking till ten past. Right.